what does a jigsaw puzzle championship look like? I was totally surprised because I always think of it as a, a relaxing meditative. So it was like, you know, a meditation competition or a, or a napping uh, competition. But I found out about it because I was Googling. First of all, one of the first facts about jigsaws is that Hugh Jackman is a huge fan. Huge. He spent about 10 minutes of maybe 15 on uh, our podcast, he and I together, talking about jigsaw puzzles. So yes, huge jigsaw puzzle fan. But one of the other results, this was right before the pandemic, was that there was a world championship in Spain, and it listed all of the countries that were competing, and there were tons of them. There were 40 countries, Mexico, Japan, Uganda, but no USA. So on a whim, I fill out the form and figure that'll be the first of this long process to qualify. I get back an email the next day, you are Team USA. And I'm like, oh my, <laughs> that's not good. The next day, no due diligence at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> like, <laughs> it was a disaster. Uh, yeah. And I, as I said, I didn't love Jake's. I thought they were, I was a snob. I thought they were too easy. They were not sophisticated. So I was like, oh God. So I recruited my family to be as a four person team and we flew to Spain and you have eight hours to finish four giant jigsaw puzzles. And we were a disaster. I mean, I'm sorry. I apologize to my fellow Americans because we came in second to last. We beat, we beat one of the Spanish hometown teams. So that's something. But these, despite us, the humiliation, I loved it because it was just so fascinating for so many reasons. First, just being able to see people at the top of the LeBron Jameses of Jigsaw. So no, even if Jigsaw, as you think, is a silly, a silly pastime, seeing anyone, and you know this, you've interviewed, that's sort of the premise. You interview the top people of every category, and you're going to learn something from them. And these people, their hands move so fast. We finished one puzzle of the four in six and a half hours. The Russian team, these women, four women from Siberia, finished in just over four hours, the whole thing. They, their hands wow. were moving so fast. And there were rumors of doping, but uh, not, not <laughs> confirmed. Um, and the, another part I loved was just meeting people from all over the world, united by this weird obsession. And I talk about jigsaw diplomacy. I actually, I felt I was a little ahead of the curve because I have a paragraph in the book that, about how much I hate Putin. This was long before the Ukraine. Before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Before it was cool. And I say, but I can't hate these people because I'm here in face to face and they're humans. And, you know, I am hoping that they're one of the, some of the millions who oppose what Putin is doing now. But, but it was sort of what I call jigsaw diplomacy. So it was a wonderful experience. And also learning, like in everything, there are strategies. You think, oh, it's just putting together. But and the strategies are sometimes surprising. You don't always. Everyone's like, "Oh, do the do the edges first. No, not necessarily. Some puzzles, if they are very colorful, you do the colors first. Sometimes you focus on shapes. If you're hit with the sky, like a huge expanse of blue, you've got to sort them by shapes. So this one has two outies and one innie. This one. So it was just wonderful to see the nuances of this delightful and ridiculous competition. And uh, yeah, it was one of my favorite experiences. I have a number of, of questions about this. The first is, how do you delegate or divide and conquer as a team? Because I can imagine if four people were just let loose, having no strategy, trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle, it might take longer than just one person trying to do it if you don't have <laughs> some type of plan going into it. And second, I'm just curious, did you notice any sponsors? I'm just wondering what kind of financial support is offered to the World Jigsaw Puzzle <laughs> Championships. <laughs> I'm guessing it's not, you know, a BMW. Maybe not, yeah. But, I mean, this was right before the COVID when Jigsaws experienced a boom during COVID. That's true. Not seen since the Great Depression. So they became harder to get than Clorox wipes. So, so maybe now... And they could be sponsored by BNV. But then, yes, it was the only sponsor was the puzzle company itself, Ravensburger, sadly. Ah, so I didn't yes. make a huge amount of money on it. But As the second to last finisher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I feel it's something. Uh, oh, yeah. it's, it's, you finished. You finished. No, it's a thing. I beat someone. 
So for strategies, like, yeah, what do you do as a team? Well, you're absolutely right. That was the secret that the Russians had. They told me it's all about division of labor, like in many endeavors. So there was one woman who specialized in sorting colors and another sorted shapes, another sorted what was good at the edges, and another was really good at the trial and error. Because I often, am, you know, I'm f- afraid to put something down if I don't think she was like, no, just do it. Just be okay with failing. You know, she put things, she'd try it. No. Next one. No. Next one. Yes. So yeah, it was fascinating to see the division. And, and I found that as a theme throughout puzzle solving. I went to this one event that was sort of the Ironman triathlon for nerds, which was called a puzzle hunt. And it was at MIT, 2,000 people, like rock, real rocket scientists. And they come together for 72 hours and solve the hardest, craziest, most baffling, nonsensical puzzles that involve like advanced calculus and Justin Bieber's tour schedule and just the most <laughs> random things you can think of. And you need 50 people on a team. The teams are 50 people because you needed specialists gigantic. in all these areas. So yes sort of a diversification and uh, having different people do different things is a big theme, I think, in, in puzzles and life. 